Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you're at. I'm Ray Rossini, host of MSP Dispatch. And as always, we have these special reports when there's someone who's bringing some excellent thought leadership into the space. Today is absolutely no different. Today, we'll be talking about ethical marketing, something I was... Uh, I'll be honest, unfamiliar with, but it absolutely makes sense when I hear it. And I hope you have that uh, amazing light bulb moment too. So help me, uh, help me welcoming Miss Megan Killian. How are you doing, Megan? I'm good, Ray. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, we got a chance to sit down at MSP GeekCon a little while back and talk a little bit, uh, which is always nice to you know take these online people that we know and meet them in person and have a chat. Uh, so that's always nice uh, and good to see people part of the community. So thank you for coming out there. Um, Absolutely. It was great to be there. But for people that didn't get a chance to sit down and talk to you or haven't seen any of your awesome LinkedIn uh, posts, can you tell us a little about who you are and why you're author? Uh, why you are capable of speaking of ethical marketing. Sure. So my name is Megan Killian. I've been in B2B technology sales and marketing for 15 years, and I've done $500 million in new revenue for B2B tech companies. And I've done all of that without lying to anybody. That's uh, a good start. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So three years ago, I relaunched my consultancy as an agency. And when we sat down, we were talking about our vision and our mission and our core values. The one thing we really all agreed about was that our vision and mission is to prove that ethical marketing is just as scalable as traditional marketing tactics. So I've helped a lot of smaller uh, MSPs and telcos to scale their revenue without doing any of that traditional, for lack of a better word, crap that I see everybody do that's really just oh, yeah. lying. And so we really believe that, yes, you should have some type of promise. But that promise should be something you can actually deliver on and need to be careful about what you say and not just do it for clicks. Um, less volume of things that are high quality is actually better than more volume of things that are just kind of crud and really defining who you want to talk to and what you want to say and what you want them to do. So that's, that's why I talk so, about ethical marketing. So hold on. As, as a, uh, a reformed engineer uh, turned executive, um, I've been in plenty of calls and plenty of uh, meetings where I listened to sales pitch something that didn't exist. And then at the end of the call, after the client is signed, they come back to me and say, make it happen. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I've always, I'll be honest, I've always felt a certain kind of way about it uh, because if you can't figure it out, you're letting down both the company you work for and the client that was promised something, right? And maybe waiting on that solution. Um, or sometimes I just had this exact moment uh, this week. I won't call out the vendor, but their marketing channel got really, really, really excited about some feature they were releasing. And uh, one of my buddies in the MSP space actually went ahead and pitched his client on it, sold the solution, never having tested and used it, came back to the vendor, asked for pricing. And the vendor said, yeah, it'll be in uh, general release in 30 to 90 days. Yeah. Um so we see a lot of that, especially in channel, where the people who are doing the selling are never going to have to face the actual customers. Um, am I allowed to name actual vendors? Um, it, I'll edit out if it's something. Uh, All right. So the best case I have, like use case I have for this is Kaseya, because I'm in a lot of those back channels and I see the things that people say. And there are a lot of people who are very frustrated and word gets out quickly. So I have clients coming to me now that are like, we have to get away from this vendor. We'll go with anybody else because they haven't kept their promises to us. And I haven't, like you just see the way that that hurts a, a business and how it hurts their relationship with the community because once it's been damaged, you can't fix it. Because now that your word isn't worth anything, it's never gonna be worth anything. You've told me a promise, you didn't keep it. And now I don't believe you. And I think a lot of this is also very top down in terms of culture. So I've worked at a lot of B2B tech companies that are engineering led, meaning they develop something and then they say to sales, go sell the thing that we built. And they tend to very much feature dump on sales and be like, you can do all these things. And sales is really it's responsible. Does everything. It makes sales toast. Sales is really responsible for translating that, right? Right into these features have actual value 
And engineers typically aren't great at that part. They're like, you can do all these things, but I don't really know what problem that solves or. To be fair, business needs and outcomes is traditionally a product manager's role to make sure you have the user story, to make sure it's translated sales. Many organizations, probably most that. of them in the MSP space, they don't have a product manager. They don't have that. It is the engineer and the salesperson and marketing. Right, so you've got and an engineer spouting off all the bells and whistles it can do, and then sales has to go translate that. But their job is to sell what exists, right? Figure out yeah. what that means for your customers and go sell it. On the other side, we have sales-led organizations where a lot of times, um, for example, when I worked for Cashfly and I was reporting into Matt Levine, who's the CTO, they don't have a CEO. His goal was to move from being an engineering-led org to a sales-led org. And so he came to me and said, Megan, go find out what people need and we'll build it. We're agile, we have the smartest people working here. We will figure it out. That's a promise from me, the CTO. That's a different culture. Absolutely. But what you need internally is alignment on which way things work, right? And and that should be said, right? That that needs to be said up front that there is nothing wrong with going to a client and saying, we're working on building this. I think I can build this for you, being upfront about what it is and saying, we're going to sell it. You know, the client agreeing to timelines and expectations and like building a house, whatever you say, takes twice as long, right? But saying that up front is still ethical, is it yeah. not? I mean, as long as you're upfront about it, it's nothing wrong with it. It's when you start promising things that don't exist. Authenticity and transparency are what matters there, right? I, I worked for a client that will not be named that had Frankenstein Frankenstein's monster of a product. And they were telling sales, just go sell it, figure out what you have to say to sell it. But the solution never came. So we were looking at six months, year, 18 months later, and the promises that we've made, not only to prospects, but to customers aren't being kept. And for me as a salesperson, very early on in my career, what I learned was that my personal brand is in beyond value. I cannot put a number on the value of my personal brand. And if I lie to people, they will never forget that. Well, and, and that strikes a good point though, but I wanna ask because these large behemoth companies, I, I'll use Comcast as an example, right? It's not MSP specific, but we've all been lied to by Comcast at some point in our lives. Sure. Uh, you know, so the technician will get there between Thursday and March of 2023 or 2045, whatever. Um, and so, but these companies are behemoth. They make billions of dollars a year and yet they routinely lie. People go into the relationship knowing they can't trust them, but they still have business. Why is it different for the SMB or the MSP that's selling on the relationship? Why, why is it maybe more important? Because your client has an alternative. So when we talk about ISPs, especially the big ones, Comcast, Spectrum, they have exclusive agreements on the fiber that's in the ground in your neighborhood or the copper, depending on where you live. Um, and no one can bypass that. So unless you want to go satellite, which we all know is not as reliable, then don't tell Elon. <laughs> Well, I mean, it, it kind of depends on where you are and, and what if you're in the middle of the ocean, satellites are way better. Um, mm -hmm. But at, at the end of the day, most companies do not have the option to run their business off of like T-Mobile's 5G or satellite. They need hard-lined fiber optic connection. So as much as I dislike Comcast, as much as I know that they lie to me, that they're not going to keep their promises, that they're going to bait and switch me, for my house on Cape Cod, they're the only solution. So I will continue to do business with them forever because I need internet. The difference as an MSP or a vendor selling into the MSP space is that there are alternatives. If you screw over your customers, Ray, which you don't, but if you did, what are they, they're gonna move to another VoIP carrier, right? Like, Yeah, and then most MSPs sell on the relationship and they should, there's nothing wrong with that. That's it. The MSP business is a relationship driven business. Um, they're not saying they should market on their relationship, but absolutely the account management side, the sale without question. So I, you know, back when I was an MSP, we didn't get these allowances, right? <laughs> like if I screwed up, people knew about it, especially cause it was in my geo, right? In my neighborhood, in my city, wherever I was, you know, whatever my stopping grounds happened to be. And so it's far easier. And like you said, in my building, when we were in MSP, three doors down, there's another MSP. <laughs> like, and let's talk about how MSPs typically get their business. 
right? Nine out of 10 MSPs I talk to rely almost entirely on referral-based marketing. That's where their business comes from, especially when I come in because that they're trying to figure out how to do sales differently. Right. So if you're telling me you scaled your business from say nothing to $1.5, $2 million a year, purely on word of mouth, then what happens to you when the word of mouth is no longer, oh, you got to go talk to so-and-so over at this company because they fixed all our tech problems and they kept all their promises. They did exactly what they said they would to they charged us a whole bunch of money and they never delivered. That community that you live in will throw you out as quickly as they embraced you. And especially as we are seeing more and more business owners belonging to younger generations, we're talking millennials and younger, um, those people make decisions based on alignment of values in a way that previous generations did not. So beyond the obvious, like your reputation and wanting to grow your business, over time, you're going to find that not only can you not screw people over, but you have to proactively market your values to get people interested in talking to you in the first place. And that's a that's an interesting premise because uh, you know you're right i you know one of my businesses uh oit voip i i built from reddit uh that's where you know a lot of the a lot of the leads and stuff came in because and not from selling from being part of the community but it was a lot of a lot of the people that would reach out would say you know i really like the stuff you have to say i feel the same way you obviously want to treat your partners well and stuff like that and so that was the pitch it wasn't your features it wasn't your availability or your you're part of the company or you have the best service and support that those weren't part of the conversation obviously you're going to have those conversations but the lead-in was i really respect what you're doing i want to do business with a company like that um, i mean msps and myself as, as an outsourced sales and marketing agency we're in service-based businesses there isn't really a product like yeah there's products baked in but the reality is what we're selling is a service. And when you're in a service-based business, you're doing business person to person. It's all about relationship. And it's different if you say sell toilet paper, you know, that's just, um, our toilet paper is good. There you go. It's out. Uh, the marketing's <laughs> not complicated. People need it. And I will say MSPs are very lucky to be in a business where what they offer is 100% needed. As a 100%. modern business, I cannot operate without technology. If my technology is down, my business is not operating. And that's even businesses that aren't necessarily digital, that's still true. If, if our phone systems don't work, if our billing systems don't work, if our cloud isn't allowing us to access documents, these are all things that are core to our business functionality. So Absolutely. MSPs are lucky in that clients can't just be like, we're not doing IT anymore. But what they can do is go find someone else who will do it if you burn them. And there's lots of competition out there. I think the uh, the current number is 50 to 55,000 MSPs in North America. And growing so, every day. And growing every day. And uh, as Dave Sobel likes to say, in a down market, more uh, new businesses are created uh, because of layoffs and because, you know. So, you know, d d know what you're doing. Uh, the TLDR, you can be in unethical in doing your marketing but you won't survive it as an msp for long if you do so and there's a better way and if you want to know the better way please reach out to megan her contact information is in the show notes below um whether you're watching this on facebook linkedin or youtube it'll be in the description uh reach out to her and her agency uh to find out if market ethical marketing works for you and your msp megan thank you so much for joining us i appreciate you uh I definitely love to have you on a partner first, another uh, another show sometime, so we can talk at length about uh, some of the other things MSPs can do to build and grow their audiences. Absolutely. All right. Until next time, everybody, take care of yourselves and each other. This has been a broadcast of the MSP Media Network.